Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar under Connection Wednesday series. Today is November 13th, and we will speak about a very important topic, how to build a correct model. My name is Jana Kadirova. I'm a product engineer, and today we are missing, missing Adam, who is on his way to Moscow event, but we have another product engineer, David Kuchera, who will lead you through the topics of today's webinar. David, we cannot hear you, sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Hello, everyone. But I have to say that I can't see your screen, Yana. Uh, <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's better. Thank oh. you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So I hope everything is fine. We can see, we can hear, so we can continue. So you are muted by default. You have already asked if we can unmute you, but sorry, it's not possible, but you can send us uh, your questions via the question uh, questions panel. So please feel free to send your questions and we will answer them during the webinar. And if we don't have enough time, we will send you the answer after the webinar. So what will be the topic? today. It's uh, about a correct model. We will show you one quite complex connection and David will speak about singularities of the model, about the equilibrium of uh, load and also about the member's length. So quite interesting and quite important topics. Maybe you are familiar with that, but it's always good to recap or just to check if you really work correctly in Idea Statica connection. And in the end of the webinar, we will have a look at our very new plugin. Uh, I will show you how you can export uh, the connection from Tecla structures without the license of Idea Statica connection. So this is something that we introduced quite recently and I will show you how to work with that. So let's start. I'm passing the presenter to David and he will show you the example. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Let's have a look uh, to customer project and sorry I have to switch on my web switch off I have to stop sharing my webcam yes that's it so once again hello everybody let's have a look to customer project and our first topic singularities the first question for all of us what is singularity it is an automatic warning which informs a user of problem within model and as a result analysis can be performed software gives you info about this kind of error you can see singularity and what happened in this case part of the structure uh, wasn't connected properly this part and flew away. Singularity can occur in several cases and we prepared for you a summary in which ones. Definitely it can be or it can happen when parts aren't uh, properly connected. There are missing welds or missing bolts or <clears throat> sorry or there is a gap between plates higher than two millimeters or we won't model one bolted connection or in some cases when you want to use only one-sided welds i prepared for you a few examples and you will see how to fix it so let's jump into idea statica and we will investigate missing bolts, gap, and one-sided weld. OK. 
Okay, let's start with missing bolts. I have already calculated this model for you, so we have the result about singularity. And if we go to the tab check, we can see what happens. We can see that this member wasn't uh, connected properly and it flew away. And we have information about singularity on this member, member three. I will go back to design. Let's have a look on the whole model. And we can see that really here are missing bolts. I modeled these bolts for you in, in advance and we can switch it on. And we can, or I can tell you something more about the bolts, what's uh, really important. When you want to connect some parts with bolts, it's necessary to set item counts. So in this case, we are talking about this bolt grid. So we won't connect member uh, bottom, uh, sorry, top flange of the member three and uh, plate 24. So you have to set appropriate parts and how many parts you want to connect. So this is really important. So we connected members together and I have already calculated this model for you and we can check the results. Now it's working, we can investigate the connection, we can display stress, strain, deformed structure or whatever you want. So we can go on, I will close this model. The next case when singularity can appear is when you have gap between parts. I will zoom it for you. In this case, we are talking about gap between plate 20 and top and bottom plate. So we have to fix it because otherwise we will have a singularity and uh, analysis won't be performed. I prepared for you model. I only increase the thickness of the plate. Now you can see that there is no gap and we have results. Again, we can investigate model. We can check results or we can uh, print report. So this is the second uh, case. And the last case I would like to show to you. This is another project we received from or through our channel. Again, here is singularity. We will talk about one-sided weld. In this place is the issue. I can rotate it for you. There is only one sided weld. Let's explore it in detail. In 3D scene, 3D scene we can uh, choose the weld and really it's only one sided weld. One sided welds aren't allowed in accordance with the codes because one sided weld can't be uh, bend it and our software Idastica connection will recognize it and as a result you will receive singularity something is not correct so we have to fix it I will change it for double sided welds now it should be okay we can run calculation and we should receive the results Okay, so uh, software will calculate. 
And the last example, I haven't model for you, but I prepared our resource center. It can happen, or singularity can happen, when you have one bolted connection. For one bolted connection, I can zoom it for you, as in this case, it's very important to set appropriate modal type. You have to set this one. Otherwise, as you can see, you will receive singularity. Okay, let's jump back into the presentation. Our next topic is about equilibrium, which is basic rule of statics. You can find it or you can find this option in the uh, upper ribbon and we recommend to switch it on, especially for continuous member because internal forces in each node of the frame must be in equilibrium. You know that one member of the joint is always set as bearing one. On the left picture, it is this, this one, and on the right picture, it is this one. The bearing member can be chosen by the designer, and the bearing member can be ended or continuous in the joint. So let's explore explore edit member. When you have ended member, so this member is supported on the one end. This is this red square mark. For continuous member, there can be two options, but only one of them leads to correct model of the whole joint and I will show you this correct option. Continuous member is supported also on one end. Again, the same uh, red square mark. And the second end can be loaded. So very important for this case, loads in equilibrium should be on and unbalanced forces should be equal to zero. Now let's play a little bit uh, with these two options for continuous member and why I'll show you why, op why option with uh, loads in equilibrium on leads to correct model of the whole joint. So let's go on, let's go on and jump into the application, this model we can close. And I have to open model with equilibrium. And that's it, we have the first option. But not recommended. Where loads in equilibrium are off. In this case, continuous member, this one, member C, is supported on both ends. You can see the red square marks on the both ends. And if we switch to load effects, you can see we aren't able to add forces into the column. And these forces should be there, at least normal force. And I can display for you results because this connection, this model was calculated in advance. So let's go to the check. And now I, I would like to show you deformed structure.
Okay, I will make it more clear for you. That's it. So please realize when equilibrium is off, you have two supports in this position and in this end. So the deformation of the, in this case, column, continuous member is column, is unreal because in the bottom and upper part is fixed. And you can see that the results seems to be okay. Therefore, we have the same model. Let's switch to the second one. It's the same model where I only switch on equilibrium. And let's display it. Yes, that's it. So, loads in equilibrium is switched on. You can see the difference. I have only one support, one fixed point. The second end of the column can be loaded. And that's the point. We can add the forces which are there. The first thing you can see, the results aren't okay. And if we display deformed structure, And again, let's make it more clear for you. We can see the difference. In this case, only this point is fixed. This one is not. So therefore, the deformation is different. And to make it or to clarify it for you, let's switch again into presentation. Here is summary of our uh, playing with the models. I prepared for you comparison of the results of these two different models. So the first one is incorrect option where loads in equilibrium is off. Both ends are supported. You can notice the red square marks. And I can't add the load effects to the column. And here you can see the deformation, the unreal deformation of the column. Contrary, we have loads in equilibrium on. The difference, there is only one uh, supported end and we can load the column. We can load the end or the free end, let's say, of the column. And the deformation is real. These two pictures, this one and this one of the deformation are very important. Well, I'm talking about deformation of the column. Something is real, something isn't. So what is real and what isn't? Let's check it in global model. Therefore, I prepare for you comparison in our brand new application member. I'm, I have modeled part of the structure for you. Two columns and one horizontal beam. And you can see that here is our connection. You can see it in more detail. And the deformation is the same as in the application connection when we have loads in equilibrium on. That's very important to realize this thing. Let's summarize it. Loads in equilibrium off for continuous member leads to incorrect model and incorrect results for the whole connections. It means every beam, plate, bolt, ATC. 
floats in equilibrium off, it means uh, this option can be used only if you want to check connected beam, this one, horizontal beam. And its connection, of course, plate, welds, bolts. In this case, continuous beam, column, have to be checked in other software manually. And also, you can see the incorrect results when loads uh, are loads, sorry, in equilibrium are off. On the left picture, we can, uh, or it seems that the results are okay, but it isn't. Correct model is unsatisfactory. Maybe uh, in this case, or for this model, uh, you can tell me that uh, the difference between the results is not so visible. And I agree with you, it depends from model to model. So I prepared for you another, ex an another example, this one, where we can compare the difference uh, in the results, maybe better, and it is really significant. We can see that right uh, option where loads in equilibrium is on, isn't satisfactory. The stress in the column is really different from the uh, option where loads in equilibrium are off. Okay, let's summarize this topic about equilibrium. In case of continuous member, we definitely recommend loads in equilibrium on and unbalanced forces should be equal to zero. How to load the ends of members depends on your 3D global model of the structure and you as an engineer will use it. In case of beam links, loads will be automatically in equilibrium. So unbalanced forces will be automatically uh, equal to zero. Loads in equilibrium off for continuous member, it's important to say, is possible to use only when you have continuous member, which isn't part of your check and is checked in, um, let's say, other software or uh, manually. I think we can go on and uh, now we will investigate topic about member length and credibility. Because we have very often questions from our customers such as where is the definition of member length, what member length is correct, why we should use default uh, settings for member length, we decided to clarify it. Because we won't make our software error proof since version 9, IDA Statica automatically, very important word, automatically, sets an appropriate length for all members according to the assigned manufacturing operations and its cross sections. On the, these two pictures I prepared for you, comparison with default settings for member length. Of course, this is correct option where we can guarantee the results. And on the right picture, I played a little bit uh, with the member lens, so it's visible that some uh, members are, or the length of the some members is different. And we can't guarantee the results if you will play with the member lens. Let's have a look. Uh, what are the four default lens? It's very simple. There are only, let's say, two algorithms. Default length of standard member, which is 1.5 multiplied by 
maximal cross section height and the second one default length of member with hollow section 2.0 multiplied by maximal cross section height for instance uh, i prepared for you this uh, section where the maximal cross section height is 360 millimeters and according to above algorithms you can see that we will use this one so the member length is uh, 1.5 multiplied by 360 millimeters and it's uh, this number so therefore let's prove it we have our customer project and uh, with help of our cloud service viewer we are able to export connection to 3d dvg file where i am able to measure it to measure the distance of this member we are to we are talking about and really you can see we proved that the length is really the same number if you are interested in our viewer or other cloud service please check very nice webinar from my colleagues you can find it or i will show you you can find it on our web in section for webinars and uh, i am talking about this one one of the connection wednesday series meet our cloud solutions we can recommend this webinar for you so let's go on with presentation and because i mentioned that member length depends on assigned manufacturing operations i add one stiffener to our beam stiffener is located in distance 300 millimeters from the origin of the connection and you can see that default length of members is set according to this operation and again it's automatic length again the same number okay let's summarize it uh, definitely we recommend use default settings and why because then we can guarantee the results and cbfm results are validated cbfm is not the black box verification of the cbfm method took a while we made or tailor made design models were created in various software such as midasphere athena abacus live tests were performed all studies were published and are available online and of course we cooperate with two university teams and they spent over three years on this challenge everything is summarized uh, not only online but also in our uh, benchmark well, in our book benchmark cases for advanced design of structure steel connections so that's all from my part and i can pass the word to jana okay i will share my screen yeah i hope you can see it so thank you david and in few last minutes let's have a look at uh, what we call the help desk highlight i will show you our new plugin we call it a viewer plugin uh, it's uh, for tecla structures and you can use it for uh, the version 2018 i and 2019 and in uh, very um, very close time we will also make it for 2019 i 
you can what uh, so what is this plugin for you can export the connection for uh, from tecla directly to idea statica viewer and not only this from viewer you have also the possibility to uh, export it to idea statica connection file without having the license for idea statica connection so this plugin should uh, be useful mostly for detailers who really don't need to work in idea statica connection they asked us for that many times because probably they don't want to buy the license or because they not really work in connection uh, software but they need to cooperate with engineers so this plugin is just for them so that the detailer can directly export idea statica connection file and send it to the engineer and now let's have a look at it uh, i have the structure in tecla you can see and after i downloaded uh, the plugin i installed it i will find it in the top ribbon so uh, next to the code check manager which you probably know if you have idea statica connection software you have a new button which is called export to viewer if i open the button i can select different national standards i will select Eurocode for in for uh, for example and the work is just the same as with the code check manager in the first step I have to select the point which will represent the node of the model so let's place it somewhere uh, close to the connection of the uh, of the central lines in the second step I have to uh, select all the members of the collect, uh, connection so I will click on these three members confirm with the space bar and in the third step I will select all the items of connections including bolts welds plates and again confirm with the space bar and now the automatic process uh, will start and you can see it's quite fast the viewer opened in my uh, web uh, browser so uh, you need to be connected to internet during this process and you can see i have the connection i have all the plates welds bolts if i select any item i can see what it is and on top of that if you go to project you have the possibility to export a DVG file, which you already know probably, and the new button, Idea Statica file. So I will download it. It asks me to, uh, to select the destination. I have it downloaded and let's open it. We will see how it looks like. And now you can work with that as uh, with any idea statica connection file so i will have there my members i will have their operations like bolts welds plates and then i will have uh, i don't have uh, the load uh, load effects of course because i exported it from tecla you can see the model i have prepared a set of uh, load effects so just uh, let's just copy it from excel sheet of course you will need to arrange uh, it in the same order as you have it in the connection but if you don't have it like this you can also adjust the the order afterwards so let's import it from xls file i will paste you can have the possibility to change change the order but i'm fine with it let's let's, uh, let's confirm and i have loaded model you can see i have almost zero unbalanced forces i can start the calculation and that's it it will it will run the analysis so you can see it's quite easy and we hope it will make the life of all detailers 
uh, much easier. And it's uh, what I want to mention. It's not only for Tecla structures, but it's also for Advanced Steel and Revit. So you can find it on our website, ideastatica.com, under the downloads. So under the normal uh, version of Ideastatica, you can see three viewer plugins, Tecla structures, Autodesk Revit, Advanced Steel. And in a quite short period, you will find it also in a, a Tecla Warehouse or in Autodesk App Store. So we are running out of time, so let's just uh, finish the presentation. Uh, maybe we have a uh, short time for one question, David. There was a question about uh, if we can turn off the equilibrium on a continuous member or in which cases can we do it? Can you just shortly answer that? Yes, of course. I mentioned this possibility. Maybe I will take presenter again, show it okay. to you. So I will launch again our presentation. There is a very nice picture which can explain it or where I explained it. Yes, it could be this one. I hope you can see uh, what I'm sharing for you. Yeah, we can see it. So on the uh, screen, we have two possibilities, launch in equilibrium off and on. We explained uh, what does it mean. And now to the question. Yes, you can use loads in equilibrium off, but only in case you won't check uh, connected beam, it means in this case, this one, and of course, it's connection plate, bolt, welds, this whole part. But you can't use this model if you won't check the whole connection. So you can use it for the connected beam, but the continuous beam, this one, in this case, column, must be checked, or you know that it's checked in other software or manually. So I hope it was clear enough. Okay, thank you. So I will take back uh, the presenter. And uh, sorry, thank you for your time. We are really glad that you joined us again. After the webinar, as usually, you will be asked to fill a very short survey for us to give us some feedback about that. If you want to play the webinar again or you want to share it with someone, you will uh, have the recording of the webinar. It will be on our web page or on our YouTube channel, as well as all the past webinars about cloud, about very different topics. So. You can also go through the last webinars. If you want to try Idea Statica and you still don't have it, so you can download the trial version from our web page. And we also encourage you to uh, go to our resource center because it's full of documentation, full of uh, different uh, tutorials, uh, verification examples, customers' examples, etc. So, next webinars will be about concrete bridges on the November 27th. Uh, you will, um, you will have the possibility to watch a webinar about continuous composite bridge for all bridge engineers or engineers working in Idea Statica RCS. It's a module for uh, concrete, um, concrete cross sections and concrete beams. And for another webinar uh, focused on steel will be on December 4th. Connection Wednesdays will now be focused on a BIM process, how to connect uh, finite element analysis tools with uh, CAT tools. So again, something that uh, most engineers use very, very often.
And that's really everything for today. Again, thank you very much. And we are looking forward to seeing you on one of our next webinars. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice day.